it's quite a complex picture. Uh, also in the mix is the Aramco IPO, uh, which did not happen as expected in 2018. So clearly, uh, and it's also tied to the Vision 2030 of the Crown Prince. So clearly the government needs money. It needs money for the Vision 2030. It also needs money for 2020 and 2019 even, right? So the government expenditure has been rising steadily in recent years, even as the oil prices have been relatively lower, let's, let's call them, compared with pre-2014. And the highest ever expenditure this year, in, in, according to their budget. So they needed the money. Um, clearly, the IPO had more than a few roadblocks, right? Uh, regulatory concerns, and then there was uh, also the valuation concern. MBS had expected $2 trillion valuation, which mm. would have raised about $100 billion. Uh, well, they've come pretty close to that figure, right? The government has managed to get $70 billion. Some people say it's just the government put money, putting money from one pocket to another. But uh, I think a, a better and nuanced way of looking at it is Saudi Aramco, which has quite a good profile, relatively low debt, is going out into the markets. It's going to raise debt. So the $10 billion uh, bond issue, as you mentioned, uh, the first international bond issue of the, of the company is just the first. I presume they will have some more in future. They've already been raising money in the domestic bond market. So uh, Aramco raises this debt at a relatively good rate uh, for, the, for the country. And uh, that puts money back into the pockets of the sovereign wealth fund. And uh, as we know, MBS wants to diversify the wealth fund. Which is a theme almost everywhere. We've seen the Norwegian fund wanting to do that as well. So it, it all makes sense. I think it's remarkable how quickly they sealed this deal. Yeah. What do you think it tells us about the Aramco IPO? Of course, we know that it was shelved. You mentioned a number of factors. There were also uh, market conditions, of course, as well, that they didn't want to have to deal with. When do you see progress coming on that front? Well, they've said 20, by 2021, so I suppose they have bought themselves time in, in some ways because the whole idea was uh, for Saudi Arabian government, uh, it had been the forex reserves had been declining quite sharply since the 2014 oil price crash so for the government to raise money. Uh, this buys a lot of time. So if you ask me, uh, you know, they could infinitely now put put off the uh, Aramco I IPO. But if they go ahead, well, that's, that's just more money in, in the government's pockets. Um, oil prices and the whole strategy of OPEC, non-OPEC, cutting uh, production to try and raise prices was, um, I believe, a, a key factor. Uh, or the IPO was a key factor behind that. Mm. Um, the big question is that do we think that the Saudis will still remain on that track, you know, uh, uh, managing production very actively, supply actively? I think they will, mm -hmm. uh, irrespective of whether it happens in 21 or, or it happens later. Hey, everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now, to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.